Welcome back, and this is session three of carving a drake mallard. And today I'm going to focus on carving the bill details. And just a word on that, if you're carving a gunny decoy, you probably don't want details on the bill. You may just paint it, paint some nostrils and a nail on to keep things sturdy. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to do pretty close to a full decorative bill on this uh, decoy. So we'll take that step by step as we go and let's get started. The first thing I wanna work on is creating this little concaved area just above the edge of the bill. I'm gonna use this uh, bullet shaped uh, ruby bit to grind that area and create a little bit of a concaved shape to both sides. And to get started on that, I'm going to use a pencil and uh, kind of give myself a guideline. It doesn't have to be precise, but we're going to start taking material off in this area above that line. What that will do is help us create a ridge on the lower edge of the bill. And then when we put additional details down there, there'll be some shape to that. But let's get started on grinding these areas out on both sides of the bill. I'm gonna start right up near the cheek and follow my guideline and gradually blend that out as you go forward towards the front of the bill. And I'm gonna reposition the head so that I can get to that concaved area that we talked about earlier. Then I'm gonna flip it around and work to make a nice soft transition. Um, we don't want a hard line in that area, just a nice soft blend. Same process on the opposite side, starting with that guideline, creating the ridge, and then working that concaved area. Let's pause for a minute and take a look at that. You can see a little bit of an indentation there in the lighting on both sides. doing some final grinding there and then taking 120 grit sandpaper, going back in that same area and removing all the grinding marks or lines and blending things into the surrounding areas. Once that's smooth, I want to go back into this area right where the concaved area meets the cheek and use that bullet bit to blend the cheek back into the concaved area so that we don't have a, a shelf there. Here's just a quick look at that concaved area and how the cheek has been blended back in. So you get that distinctive shape from the front. Now I'm gonna take a little 320 grit sandpaper and just smooth everything down after doing that concaved carving on the side. And you can see this is very subtle. There's not like there's a hard line there. But now I just want to remove all the uh, grinding lines and make sure the bill is nice and smooth as we move to the next step. Next thing I want to do is use the calipers and the study bill and uh, transfer 
some of these key areas like the nail to the carving. These areas on each side of the nail, I can kind of freehand. sides and then I'll do the same thing with the uh, nostrils using the calipers to make sure they're located properly on the bill just pay close attention to your reference uh, you can see these grooves on the end of the bill come around the corner but then gradually just kind of fade away as you move back on the bill. So we're gonna to wanna to duplicate that on the carving. And then this groove right along the lower edge of the bill is smaller, but goes and fades away out here. So those type of details are important as you're putting your carving together. Now I wanna locate that nostril. So I'm going from this point on the bill to the beginning of the nostril rim that houses the nostril. So we're going to want to carve this larger shape first and then install a nostril. So that's that dimension. I can transfer it over to the carving. Both sides. Then go back and pick up what is the length of the structure there. Out like that. So transfer that to the carving. So now I know where those should lie. And uh, if you look at this from the top, there's a little bit of an angling in, in a V shape. So I'm going to transfer those to the carving. So I've got my center line here to keep things centered and so I don't get off track. And then I'm estimating the depth of those just through experience, but you may want to get a, a dimension with your dividers on that. So that's kind of where they're going to lay in there. And now I'm going to use uh, a very small cylindrical diamond or ruby cutter. This is probably one and a half millimeters, so it's, it's very small, but that'll allow us to get into these tight areas and begin shaping the bill. You can see I use my pinky finger as a rest, and I think that's critical. It's a lot like painting to get a nice a fine line and good control. Uh, use your pinky to give you an anchor and then work from there. So I'm using this bit to just begin to develop those features of the bill. This is that area where the groove becomes shallow and just disappears altogether. I'm working these uh, grooves in the end of the bill from both directions to develop some depth there and some roundness coming out of the groove. Same with the other side. Working on the nail, again, in both directions to deepen that groove between the nail and the rest of the bill and round the edges both ways. 
Now I'm going to work on that nostril rim area. And this takes a lot of patience. It's pretty meticulous work. Um, just going back and forth and developing that nostril rim that we can install the nostril in once it's developed. Now I'm going to switch to a little flame-shaped uh, ruby cutter with a point on it and that allows me to get in around those areas and begin to blend the carving I've done on the nostril rim into the surrounding bill. Now I want to work on this area just in front of the notch. There's a little indentation there. It's subtle, but it's there. And we want to duplicate that in the carving. So I'm going to use this shape on a little ruby uh, grinder and carefully work that concaved area in just in front of the notch. It's not very deep on a mallard, so you don't want to go overboard there, but it's definitely there in the study bill that I have. Just working to blend that into the surrounding areas of the bill so there are no hard lines there. Got things roughed in, and uh, there would be quite a bit of sanding to do. This is a tool that I've found very valuable. It just uh, allows you to use your grinding bits in a handle like this, and there's you can put one on either end, and it's pretty handy for sanding areas that have been roughed in. It gives you a lot of control, so I I recommend this tool. You know, you can work areas like this before you get to the actual sanding and get a lot of the work out of the way. I'm using the 120 grit sandpaper to uh, smooth the grinding areas. Just, you have to take, take your time on this. It just takes time to get all of the grinding marks and indentations back out. I'll do this 120 and then we'll keep moving to finer and finer sandpaper so that we end up with a nice smooth surface. I'm going to use the dividers again, find the location of that nostril, transfer that to the carving, both sides. By doing it this way, the dividers kind of keep things symmetrical. 
if you're just eyeballing it from side to side, it may be hard to get that in the right position. I'm going to do the same thing on just the size of the nostril itself. Those sides. Then I use a pencil. Take a look at your study bill. It's kind of a kidney-shaped nostril. So I like to sketch it on before I grind it to make sure I think it looks right. So I'm going to do that both sides. The other thing this allows you to do is take a look before you commit to the grinding from the front. Make sure things look symmetrical. That looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead with the grinding. And I use a, the smallest spherical grinder I could get. It's about, it's just over a millimeter, and it's perfect for getting in these nostril areas. You don't have a very big target here, so again, I use my pinky finger for a rest and go at this slowly and don't force things that would cause your bit to wander off and take out part of the, the nostril rim and just gradually deepen and shape up the nostril. After I grind those, I like to go in with a pencil and just darken the nostril just to see how it's going to project and whether I have the right size and shape. Now we're going to focus on this crease that goes along the bottom of the uh, upper mandible. And I'm going to take a pencil, kind of use my finger to help guide it along the edge, give myself a guideline, both sides like that. Now I'm going to use a knife and just very carefully follow that guideline. Not too deep. Just take your time. And then this fades out as it goes towards the tip of the bill. And next, I'm going to use this small cylindrical uh, diamond bit to go along that scored line and make it a little deeper and more prevalent. This is pretty delicate work, so go slowly and try to maintain consistency in the shape and the depth of this line so that there's not a lot of waviness to it. It should be relatively straight. And it does uh, fade out as it gets close to the tip of the bill there. There you can see the finished I'll zoom in a bit so that you can take a closer look at that. I find that by scoring that with the knife first, that really helps guide the grinder as you're sliding it through there and avoids getting off track or, or a, a crooked line there. Now I've got a little uh, 320 sandpaper Fold it into a square so there's a nice sharp corner. And I use that to go on either side and smooth and sand that area. Flip it over and go in the opposite direction. But the point of that is a nice way to kind of get down in that crevice and uh, smooth it up a bit. Now 
And now I'm just gonna use the 320 sandpaper and work the entire bill and smooth everything out. And you can use that corner that I showed you to get into areas like this and sand around the nostril. This just takes some time to get it all smooth after all of this grinding. Last thing I'm going to do is use this little embossing tool. It's got a different size ball on either end and uh, use it to push into the tooth below and begin to develop some wrinkles this kind of takes some practice but generally I put a few wrinkles around the base of the bill here I put a few out here at the end of the nostril kind of fanned out here coming out of the crown I'm doing this relatively quickly for demonstration purposes um, but you want to take some time with this and I'll go back over these and then I put a few coming out of the nail kind of fanning out You can see, hopefully you can see that on the film. It gives a little bit of texture to the bill. I'll work those and soften them so that you don't want them to be hard ridges. But you want enough there that's going to translate through the, the paint as well. Just a little closer look at that wrinkling of the bill. Kind of use your discretion on how much you want to do there. Just to find a look at the study bill compared to the carving. Close enough. All right, we've got a completed Mallard Drake head with the exception of the eyes, and we'll install those in the next segment. So hopefully you'll come back and uh, we'll continue to carve this decoy together. I hope you're getting value out of this. If you are, please share it with other people that might uh, want to pick up carving or just need some additional help. That's the goal. Thanks. See you next time.